Hello and welcome everyone to Gold Asset of the Day for the 3rd of September presented by myself, Phil Carr, at the Gold and Silver Club. So first of all, what do you need to know for the week ahead? We of course last week saw gold break out to 1,550 US dollars per ounce, break out to six year highs. As you mentioned, do keep an eye on silver. Silver prices last week, they broke out to two year highs, breaking above $18.50 per ounce. In fact, over the month of August, Silver prices were up over 12.5%, the biggest move that we've in fact seen so far in 2019. And we're not that far off now, the three year highs. As we mentioned last week, keep a very close eye on the gold to silver ratio, which is now broken down to three month lows. So with that, the breakout that we've seen last week on gold, again, I congratulate all of you who capitalized on that move last week. We've mentioned yet again, you really want to look for buying evidence around that 1,500 to 1,510 zone, which again, of course, we saw in the previous week. We've in fact capitalized on another gap on the open at the beginning of this week, banking 500 points profit on gold just off the Sunday open, where we've seen again more trade tensions, of course, in the previous week between the US and China. And we've seen the tariffs get implemented on China on Sunday, which helped gold break out and gap up over 120 points on the Sunday through to Monday open. So other points you need to be aware of as we go into a fresh week. Well, hedge funds and money managers, they have yet again increased their overall net long positions in gold and also silver in the latest week. And with that, we of course have seen a significant increase again in the overall net long positions and retail traders have been on the wrong side of the position again with over 60% selling short last week. And we've seen the same thing happen time and time again over the month of August where many retail traders are trying to catch the top in gold and we continue to see shallow retracements and each time gold is pulling back very quickly we are seeing gold catch a bid. So over the course of this week we're currently seeing gold trade around 1532 US dollars per ounce. Around these levels we are looking certainly later on in the week towards non-farm payroll numbers for data of course about the unemployment rate, average hourly earnings and also the headline non-farm payroll number as well. Now the Federal Reserve is anticipated to cut interest rates again by a quarter percent as we get closer to the FOMC statement on the 18th of September. So you really want to have that in the diary as well. And of course, the Federal Reserve will be looking at the data from non-farm payrolls on Friday as to whether the US economy is going to be strong enough to withstand the potential for a interest rate cut. So the, the Federal Reserve will of course be watching very closely the numbers on Friday's non-farm payroll with regard to guidance on future monetary policy. So with that, you want to keep a very close eye on non-farm payrolls on Friday. So for this week, we are looking at again, buying opportunities at the lower end of the range. So if we pull back to around 1,500 to 1,510 level, do look at those zones for evidence of buying coming in. There are a lot of sellers in the market who each time gold is breaking down, they're looking to sell at those key levels. They're looking at just purely technicals, for example, a break of a trend channel in order to sell short. And what we've seen time and time again, as you mentioned as well on the Week Ahead report on Gold and Silver Club YouTube channel, is look out for the potential of a bear trap, which is where you start to see gold breaking down, break towards 1500 and very quickly buyers come back in and then we see a breakout back towards the upper end of the range. So we are looking at the potential for gold to again make a move back towards the six year highs, 1550 US dollars per ounce. And I would look again at that buying evidence at the lower end of the range. Now, of course, right now, gold is trading around 1532. So it's mid range at the moment. So you really want to be patient, wait for those opportunities to come into the market. We still do have long positions from 1500 US dollars per ounce that we continue to manage, but we are looking at opportunities to add to that position on any meaningful pullbacks back towards the lower end of the range over the course of this week. So again, three points to be aware of this week. Hedge funds and money managers, they have yet again increased their net long positions in the latest week. We also have non-farm payrolls on Friday and of course the FOMC statement, which is going to be scheduled on the 18th of December. And so far there's a 93% chance that the Federal Reserve are going to go ahead and cut interest rates. So with that, that has been Gold Asset of the Day. And of course, I wish you all good trading. Welcome to the Q&A section of today's Asset of the Day. And we're going to go through a little bit more detail on some questions we've had on silver. So Jack, going back to a question you had on silver, which was with respect to where we saw the price action going between now and really the end of the year, given that silver has now broken out to two year highs. So as we mentioned last week, we were looking for $18 per ounce to get hit on silver. We hit that level midweek last week, 
The gold silver ratio has now broken down to three month lows. And as you can see right now, silver has been one of the best performing assets over the month of August up 12.5%. Now what you need to bear in mind is that the end of last week and at the beginning of this week as well, we of course on Monday had Labor Day. So at the end of last week was the end of the month of August. We saw quite a lot of profit taking, a correction in silver, taking the price back down towards the $18 level, but we're definitely finding support at that zone. The gold silver ratio does continue to break down. If we were to see a similar move on silver and this catch up to what we've seen on gold, which is a breakout to six year highs, that would position silver much closer to 20 US dollars per ounce. And of course, we're trading at $18.50 at the moment. We continue to see hedge funds and money managers, they're adding to their net long positions in silver. And we're starting to see a little bit of a shift here out of gold and repositioning into silver as well, as there's big anticipation that over this month and as we continue with this quarter, as the Federal Reserve is anticipated to cut interest rates, the silver prices will continue to catch up to the breakout on gold. Not only silver, platinum also broke above 900 dollars per ounce last week and on Friday palladium had a capitulation move and rallied over 700 points to the upside so you absolutely want to watch out for those correlations now George you had a question which was with respect to the correlation of gold to silver and this is a great question because at the moment whenever gold has a pause you really want to look out for silver the correlation silver over the last couple of weeks has continued to lead the move so for example if you are seeing a pause in gold price action and you look over to silver and silver is breaking out in fact you've got key levels of the moment where silver has been trading around $18.50 per ounce. If silver breaks above the previous swing high, which is approximately $18.65, if we break above that two year high and gold hasn't started to move yet and gain traction, if it's still consolidating, for example, at $1,530, expect gold to shortly move to the upside afterwards. And it's the same with the downside. On the Sunday open, we saw silver gap up, started to roll over, gold was a bit muted and then broke down later on in the session. So watch that correlation closely between gold and silver. Silver is leading the moves at the moment and then you want to keep an eye on the gold to silver ratio. So as I discussed on gold asset of the day, keep an eye this week on Friday's non-farm payroll data and of course have the date in the diary of the 18th of September which is going to be the FOMC statement where the Federal Reserve are anticipated to cut interest rates. So with that I wish you all good trading.